Here we go, up and running, good morning. Overcast here in Tokyo today. Overcast and muggy, it's going to be hot, I guess, hot and sticky, and maybe rain later, but uh, at the moment it's okay, it's dry. Good morning, good morning. What's this? My parents would usually watch, but they're sleeping. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't see. Good morning, anyway. I, I, I. Bit of an unusual, just a few moments ago, about, about 60 seconds ago, I'm getting the camera set up here, and it, walking past the camera was a group of four German tourists. They walked the other way, they didn't see me, and they were German or Austrian, I, I don't know, chatting in German. Bulky men, hiking type men, backpacks, walking the other way, <laughs> like a, a Saxa, German tourist in a Saxa, I don't know. There are people getting into the country, there, you know, there's no individual easy tourism, but there are people getting in here, you know. My parents and George, they've gone to bed early today. Okay, it sounds like my mother too, I think, whatever, okay, All right. thank you. So I guess so, John, say we're on their approved itinerary. I don't know, they weren't here, they were going someplace. Four guys hiking down the street, quite substantial backpacks, chatting in German, two and two. One guy had a walking stick, like they're heading for the mountains. So, so maybe they've been staying at a hotel here and they're heading for the train station on their way out. I, that's all I know, but uh, they're on their guided tour, I guess, I don't know. I don't know how it works these days. I really don't know what's happening. Nobody knows. There was an update to the government's official information page last night, and when I saw that it had updated, I eagerly glommed it and had a look at it, and it wasn't anything new. It was the reiteration that starting on the 7th, two days from now, they're letting people in who haven't had the PCR test, as long as they've had three vaccinations. I know nothing other than that. They're slow walking towards this. Suga-san, is she here? Did she come in just now? Ishikawa-san is already upstairs. And actually, today we're going to have upstairs a full house. The twins have become triplets. <laughs> so we're gonna have a full house upstairs. Dei-chan's working on uh, owls. Dei-chan's working on owls. Ishikawa-san's working on next month, no, this month's print, the second group that's due September 11th. Sugisan is working on this month's print, the third group, the group that's due September 21st, and Ayumi-san is coming today, and I'm in trouble. Ayumi-san has spent the last two weeks up in Hokkaido. Before she left for Hokkaido, that's her family, that's where she comes from. She spent the last two weeks up in Hokkaido, and before she left, she did some test printing on a print that we all know very well. And then just the day she left, she brought me the box of blocks and she brought me the proofs and said, okay, there's some adjustments required. And that would have been, I think, on the Friday or Saturday, two weeks ago. And I'm like, okay, good, I'll get to it Monday morning. No problem, no problem. And then that Sunday, that weekend, I hit my back and one thing led to another and I haven't even thought about it. I totally forgot about it, except this morning when I got up there and I saw in the fridge door Ayumi-san and she wants her package of Bonodori paper. She wants to start this morning and I haven't even opened her box. So this morning's stream was going to be work on the October prints. It's not, it's going to be Dave looking at Ayumi-san's notes and trying to figure out what he has to do before 9.30 or 9 o'clock when she gets here. But let's do this. You haven't seen this, I think. You saw a tease. You saw a tease image. I don't think anybody's seen this. This is not really 100% the final version, but it's the current proof version. This is Jed's image of the bot. Bonodori at Zenkoji Temple in Nagano. You saw me cut the lines off the lanterns to show. You saw me take these lines away. But we are not ready. She wants some more adjustments. There are still places here and there where we need some carving. And there's a major place over on the stand here where there's way too much red popping into the lanterns. And she needs these cleaned up before she can continue.
But this is the idea, and as I said, this is not final, capital F-I-N-A-L, but it is the latest proof that we have. It looks like we may have a missing piece of ground here. This may need to be fixed. Oh, I know. No, it's his jeans. Somebody's wearing jeans, but it looks like ground is missing. I wonder. I wonder what to do. Anyway, we'll see. Decisions, decisions later. It's also, you can see, this is not still not registered properly. It's looking good. We cut some extra blocks. You saw me cut an extra block. The idea being we wanted to put some light at the bottom of this and darker on the top. And I think we still need it to be darker on the top, but uh, to make it look like the glow is coming from underneath. Well, the colors on the people are weird. Yeah, this is nighttime under lantern light. You know, you know. There's different versions, as I said, it's not finalized. There are different versions of this. That looks better, that's much tighter. Look at this, the registration is tighter. Look at this, the jeans no longer look funny. So there are different versions here. This version is much tighter. But you can see clearly, so I'm gonna be busy this morning. I've gotta now go through this and decide what places need to be chopped out of this. So today's stream is going to be uh, a lot of fussing around here. I'm going to be going back and forth, back and forth, grabbing one of these blocks, trying to figure out what to cut. This is not going to be a completely smooth sit back and watch Dave work. I have got to uh, do a lot of fussing, fussing around here. This is nothing to do with Yoshida. This is an original print from Jetsan. some blocks. First what I do need to do is the dark block that we pulled off the lanterns. There are some places where those lines are still popping out into a color area. So step one, I gotta find a key block. chatting going on. Okay, you, you guys talk well, because I'm not going to be, uh, as I said, it's going to be back and forth, back and forth for me. This is not going to be a smooth, easy runoff of work here. It's going to be very picky, picky, picky. For example, I don't know if you can see it, how close you can see. There are places where There are places where the lines of the dark key come down a bit too far and they're interfering with the color blocks at the bottom. Someone's asking questions, is there orange in the blue sky? I really don't know what she's done here. I'm not the person to ask at the moment. 
I let her go with the uh, proofing. I didn't get involved with it. She just went ahead. She had Jed's Photoshop image. We looked at a bunch of actual, you know, photographs of Zenkoji and the real event. And then she went at it. And she and I haven't actually sat down and discussed this yet. That's on the plans for today. Before she starts the actual, what we would call Honzuri, before she starts doing the real printing. Honban. We will go over all of her proofs. There's lots more proofs upstairs. She's just given me a few here. And then she and I will go through the thing and decide what to do. We may toss a proof to Jed and say, hey Jed, what do you think about this? Would you like a bit lighter, darker here? We may do this or uh, we may not. Based on experience with Jed, he probably just says, look, you guys are on this now. You guys go ahead and do it. Is probably what he would say. So, uh, But we're sort of honor bound. If there's some major things that we would like to fool around with, we of course uh, chat with Jed first. Some of this is going to be difficult to see. There's no way around this. I'm sorry. So, uh, Part of the problem for me here too is that she has really fooled around with the registration. She's been trying to decide where the registration sits and she's moved things up and down, up and down and on each block she's tested a couple of versions and I can't see. You know, there's, there's, you know, you can see, look, some of the key block lines are popping down here and if this was the final registration version they need to be trimmed off. But I don't think that is, because the guy's face doesn't match either. So I, it's, I can't trust this yet. Let's find the red one. I know I can do some of the red. That needs absolutely to come off here. Let me find that red block.
I don't know about this, you know. Okay, I'm looking at this here. There's so many variations. She hasn't really got a copy with a clean, good, tight registration. She's been testing colors, and the registration is not tight. It's left and right all over the place. I don't dare try and cut some of these because I don't know where the registration is. So I think the chance of me screwing something up here is really, really, really quite large. So I think, I think we're going to change again. We're going to change plans here. There's no way I can do this based on the information she's given me here. It's just not clear enough. There's three copies, and all three copies have different registration. And I don't know which is the master. The problem is there's two key blocks. We have a light key block for the temple and the dancers, and then a dark key block for the lines that go on top of this. And on all three versions she's given me here, those two are on different alignments. So that doesn't give me enough information to know what to do here. So we're going to cut and run. There's no way. I'm going to have to do this with her. She's going to have to prepare another print with those two key blocks only carved on it so I can see how they line up. And then, so she and I will have to do this together today after she gets here. So let's just cut and run. Not enough information. Let's go back to the real work. <laughs> can I get this off the bench without killing myself? Yes. Okay, sorry for the sidetrack. Let's just get back to the real work. Let's get back to the real work. So it doesn't matter that I forgot about that. I couldn't have done anything with it anyway. Okay, where we are. Here's where we are. The key block is done. We did the color transfers. On the last stream, on the Saturday morning, I pasted down one of the color transfers and started carving. Later that day, and also a bit Sunday morning, I moved ahead. I did four more color transfers, the same way that you saw me do them before. I traced on, traced over, peeled them off, pasted them down. So the five color blocks are now ready to be carved. These haven't been started yet. This one, I finished carving it, and it's now at the stage where it's ready for block clearing. So let's do a bit of this work here this morning. Someone says, I haven't mentioned, Dave mentioned termites. There are termites over in the Ome house. I have no knowledge of them here. This is a concrete building. Over in Ome, we do have, I don't know, Shiro Adi which is what they're generally known as here. White ants is the term for, for, for normal termites that you see here. We do have them in Ome. Did you bother our blocks? No, it's just a house. They need, like, they get into the house at the bottom of the post, the damp area. Our blocks are stored on, on shelves, open shelves, and they're of completely no interest to termites whatsoever. They're completely dry. There's lots of air movement there. They're on open shelves. They're not wrapped up in plastic. And they're out in the open. Termites need you know, those dark, quiet, private places that are damp, as far as I know, anyway. That's my story anyway. It could be that I'll go back there one day, look at the poet's prints blocks that I haven't looked at for decades, open up one of the shelves there and find out that there's nothing left but dust. I don't know. I don't think so. Old cherry blocks don't seem to be a target for bugs and stuff, you know. 
old prints and books, yes. But when we get old blocks now and then, you know, the, the old blocks that we've got here that we've bought from auctions and stuff, very, very few of them are ever uh, eaten. I think cherry wood, or, you know, the used cherry wood in the sense of a, of a wood block, printing block, doesn't seem to be particularly attractive to uh, any specific insects or bugs. In my experience, anyway, and I've got, I've got lots, I've got blocks down there that are 35 years old. Well, Contar is here, is he, after our stream the other day? <laughs> the other day, you know, well, Contar is here talking about this. So, uh, I don't know, after we did this raid thing the other day, I don't know, I, I pressed the buttons and, and started this process off, but then I didn't, uh, I didn't sit there. I had to get upstairs, I had to go to the bathroom, grab a cup of coffee. There was something else I was supposed to do. I can't remember what I did, I ran away. So I didn't come back to that for, for an hour or so. <coughs> I saw they were still going on, and I saw it. The Contar and I had talked about this before. I did visit his stream, it was, I don't know, a month ago, a few weeks back, to see what was going on, see what it was about. And it seemed interesting what he's doing, you know, certainly super useful for learning Japanese. But the, the downside that I found to this, I think I can say this, it's not an insult to Contar at all, the content. The content of the the book that Kantar is particularly reading right now, going through, I really had trouble with this. You know, just I found it like, why are we sitting here doing this? What's the point of all this? This is all exactly the same thing, repeating again and again and again. Someone says, "I will kill you." Someone says, "No, you can't," and then they proceed to fight, and then that's the end of it. And then the next chapter is the same thing happening again. Like, what's the point of this? You know. So I needed to get the paper out. Yeah, that's another thing I had to do, so, so, so. But, uh, so I'm not dissing Contar, I'm dissing the content of that book. Is that the best, most interesting? Yeah, someone says it's a very popular manga, I get it, but what's the point? I'm not, like, I'm too intelligent for that, I'm super pretentious, that's not what I'm trying to say. Just, I, in my day, read comic books morning to night when I was 8, 10, 12, 14 years old. Were they that bad, the comic books that we read when I was a kid? Were they as bad, as boring, and as insipid as that, really? I don't know. I mean, the people that created that thing, Demon Slayer, they are ultra-millionaires, ultra so they, they've obviously got the mood of the, of the market correct. I'm the odd man out here. But I just didn't see any content worth spending two minutes with, you know. Learning a language, it was great. Study, you know, let's go through this painful, not interesting thing for the purpose of study. 
So someone says, I've gone back to the old comics and some of them are pretty bad. I guess so, I guess so. But the thing is, I was eight years old, 10 years old, 12 years old. This Demon Slayer thing, this is adults who are like buying this and enjoying this. The kids on Dave's lawn. <laughs> it's okay. I get it. I'm, I'm on board with what I'm saying here. I understand. I, I don't know. Whatever. I'm, 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 whatever. I'm smiling and laughing as I tell you this. It's okay. But I really thought, isn't there anything that could be a bit more interesting or useful or have a story that had some kind of plot? Or... I guess plot doesn't mean anything anymore. I don't know. The other day, after I had gone to his channel and w watching this, you know, as I was watching it, this is a couple of weeks ago, I watched for a couple of hours and, and I typed a couple of things into the chat. But as I was doing so, I was thinking, man, if getting to be a multimillionaire through manga is this easy, then let me get a piece of this. <laughs> Whatever. It's the standard thing. I could do better than this, you know. My kid could draw art better than this, th that kind of thing, you know. And I sat there thinking, okay, you know, if I were going to do this. Okay, I think we've got most of the reachable stuff now. The, the roughness in all the wide areas for the most part is now gone. For those of you who don't know, I know why am I fooling around in the areas here that are not going to print? You know, these are the printing surfaces. What am I doing wasting my time in the bottom of these oceans getting them flat? It really is important to the printers. They don't have to be perfectly flat, but if the roughness that was there a few minutes ago that you saw, that roughness as the brush, as the printer rubs their brush over the whole thing here, the rough areas there pick up pigment. They really do. If you're making 10 prints, 15 prints, you don't even notice this is happening. But if you're making 50 prints, 100 prints, it happens. And as you rub your brush and print, and rub your brush and print, and rub your brush and print, pigment is building up like crazy on all of the areas in the, in the unneeded part that have roughness. And it builds up, and it builds up literally up. It starts to get high. And you get, always, you get after 50 copies, or again, 100 copies, whatever you're doing, however carefully you've carved it, you start to get blotches in your prints. So we now go over this. You've seen me. This is just something we always do. Go over this, and it's not glass smooth, but the biggest, most protrusive roughnesses are now gone. And now the final step is I've got to get up close to the line and get rid of the last little bits here. Around. I brought my chisel as close as I dared without being... Uh, Daredevil, one little slip with a chisel and you've gone too far, you're in trouble. So I brought my chisel as close as I could, and now the final stage is to get that last area against the line to get those off. I don't think my comments there a minute ago were get off my lawn type of comments. I don't think so. I know I'm not trying to be the old reactionary guy saying the kids these don't these days don't know what's going on. I don't think actually it's that kind of an approach. That manga that Kantar is reading is is clearly an adult market manga. This is not something that the, the little little kids are reading, you know, on their way home from from elementary school. So I think I'm, I'm justified in in making some kind of comments about it, saying I really think it could be better. But what, I, I, I'm not the market for it. I'm not the target, obviously. Anyway, anyway, anyway.
Uh, we did have a similar conversation on this uh, stream here. I think it was a year ago or a couple of years ago. I had been chatting about uh, the, uh, the remembrance that my mother had got angry one day and taken away one of our comic books, myself and my brother. I think we'd had a nightmare. I or my brother had had a nightmare about something we had read in a comic book that day. It was, we talked about it, it was about a, a snake or a hand that came up out of a toilet and grabbed people in the middle of the night and that kind of stuff. And I guess one of us or both of us had had a nightmare and my mother got upset. She threw the comic book away. We're never going to have more like that again, blah, 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 junk, blah, 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 blah. I had told that story. Somebody found a link to this thing online. I went to read it and yeah, I think that was the one we were talking about. I can't be sure because I only saw it, you know, I only read it once before it got thrown away, <laughs> but whatever. But it did seem to match. There was a story about a hand or a snake that came up out of a toilet, terrorized the, the town and, and stuff like this, you know, so. And yeah, it was bad. They're, they're redeeming literary value zero, not even zero, minus 100. I get it. It was not great literature. But there was a story and stress and tension and a plot and a resolution and it finished. This was actually literature at, at you know, an eight-year-old level. And that's not what I, what, anyway, 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 anyway. <laughs> so Kant is saying, what would constitute an adult manga series? Well, I'm, again, I shouldn't even be talking about this because I haven't read enough of the damn stuff. There's probably lots of good stuff out there. Just I don't know. So I'm, I'm shooting out where I shouldn't be shooting. I'm sorry. <laughs> enough, enough, enough already. I'm just going to get myself in trouble. Hey, hey, hey. One more comment on that then, without, without talking about this. In my newspaper, my Japanese translated newspaper, I get the, the newspaper every day. It's the one called the Japan News. It's actually a translation, for the most part, of items from the major Japanese newspaper called the Daily Yomiuri. It's Japan's biggest, or it was, I think still is, Japan's biggest actual uh, physical newspaper in circulation, the Daily Yomiuri. It's a little bit, oh, I can't say right wing. That, that's a wrong it makes you sound like white supremacists and something. It's conservative. It's a conservative newspaper. And anyway, among there, they have, uh, they have columns and features about different things, including pop culture. And in the actual Daily Yomiuri, the Japanese side, there is a columnist about manga. And he, he, I think there's one for anime and there's one for manga. There's a columnist for, uh, what is it called? The Kamen Riders kind of thing. She talks about that kind of stuff. Anyway, there is a column about manga, and every now and then, once a month or so, it's translated into English and dropped into my newspaper, the Japan News, the English newspaper. And I skim this. I don't really read it because I don't know the, the background to, to, to the thing we're talking about, but I skim it. And this guy actually, he introduces in each one of his columns, he introduces a manga that perhaps he thinks people haven't seen or something. And his commentary is really along the lines of, I see this all the time, the story really pulled at my heartstrings. It made me cry. I walked away from this thinking. I, re I read the first version, the first volume, and I could not put it down until I got to volume 567, you know, or whatever, this kind of a story. And he says it delves deeply into the human psyche and stuff like this. So there, there is stuff like this out there, and people are seeing it in stuff like this. So I'll let go of the topic now, but, you know, so I get it. I, I, I understand that there is out there a rich literature in that format. Absolutely. I can believe that that's the case. The color separation we've got here, I showed each Kaosan yesterday my plans for this color separation. The five color blocks that we have. This one's going to be orange, this is going to be green, this is going to be such and such. I showed her the, the color separation along with Jed's original. 
and she looked at the colors. So I'm trying to get her involved before we start printing, you know. So, uh, so, uh, so I showed her the colors, and she said, "Do you really think that's what's going to look like?" And I said, "Actually, I don't know." And I leveled with her. I said, "I don't know," because the Photoshop master we had on this one from Jed, he did it again with his color layering, and he put everything on multiple. And he and I have uh, discussed this many, 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 many times. The thing that Photoshop does when you multiply layers is in no way anywhere near comparable to what you do in real life when you stack pigments on top of each other. The only way in Photoshop you can get an analog to this is if you never use full opacity. If you've got a Photoshop base and you've got whatever, let's get a yellow and a blue, whatever, you put your yellow zone in and if you put it at 100% opacity in Photoshop, and you put your blue zone in that's going to overlay it, if you've got that at 100% opacity, then you're going to get blue and yellow. You're not going to get any green. Just suppose you put the blue one at 50% opacity. The part that overlaps is going to be some kind of a green tinted. But then if you move them the other way around, the yellow, which is at 100% opacity, is going to block this and become yellow. So when you're mocking these things up in Photoshop with the intention of making a woodblock print, not with the intention of that's your finished project. When you're mocking it up to, 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 to simulate woodblock printing, you can never, ever use an opacity layer more than 50, 60, 70%, unless you're talking about black, which is going to blot everything out anyway. And what Jed and whatever they've been doing, putting a yellow multiply through to the blue and green, and that's just not in any way indicative of the way that pigments stack up. So I took the file, I took the finished colors, and I made a new set of color layouts, color separations, based on X percent opacity solid colors, trying to simulate what his other version came out. And I could not make it work. So what we've got here today, we've got five color layers that I think are going to get as close to his, or his, the one that he threw out at me. And then we're going to look at this and decide, okay, what else do I need to go on top of this to help make it do this? So this is stage one color separation for this. That uh, idea, I said the blue on top of the yellow or whatever making green. The question then becomes, Joe, if you've made your blue layer, just for example, say 50% opacity, and you've made your yellow layer at 50% opacity, and then you try an experiment. You put the blue on top, what kind of green comes out? You put the yellow on top, what kind of green comes out? If you did that with 50 and 50, they will be quite a different green, because a 50% blue on top of a yellow, and then a 50% yellow on top of a blue, will create, in Photoshop, quite a different aspect. I, again, I'm using the word blue and yellow as a, as a catch-all for something. In the real world here, and we did this all the time in our print parties, back when we had our, our Momotaro, the Peach Boy print, it actually had only three tones. It had a simple red block, a simple blue block, and a simple yellow block, plus the key. And we would get this question. We had it set up, so I think they were printing, I think they printed yellow first and red. I can't remember what we used to do. And then people would ask, what happens if you print them in different layers? And what I frequently did during break time, during those parties, I would say, okay, tell you what, you were asking earlier before the break about these colors. Let me show you what happens. And I took a piece of paper and I printed just, just the color. I printed yellow, blue, they couldn't see it. I printed blue, yellow, they couldn't see it. Then I put them behind my back. And then I brought them out, which is which. And they couldn't tell, because in the actual wood block, with an average yellow and an average blue, it makes no difference which one goes on first. I've got to qualify that. If you had a really, really deep blue and a really, really faint yellow, then yes, it will make a difference. But if you've got average saturation on the two colors, it doesn't make any difference which one went on first. And that's a factor for us when we are doing our color separations here. On well, my visible, get zoomed in a bit more maybe, I don't know.
You guys got your own conversation going on. <laughs> go for it, go for it, go for it. The question here, are these blocks difficult to print with? Do the printers like them at all? They are tough. Yes, they are tough. I know. If we were making these match label prints the way they were made in the old days, then it would be a piece of cake. Slap the paper on, throw it forward, slap it on, throw it forward, away you go. Because the match labels that I've been showing you very, very, very rarely are perfectly aligned. They are actually pretty rough work. They were very cheap work for the printers. They were very casual work. Some of them were nicely made, but none of them had real much care and attention paid to them, with very, very rare exceptions, the ones that we've seen here on the stream. Our approach to it, because these are actual, you know, real, quote, real, unquote, prints, we're trying to do them as perfectly as possible. And it's turning out to be it's turning out to be really, really, really stressful for the printers. Here, I've got my collection from this year. This is, I want to really make this point. Necromancy Black has asked this. If you go through our series for this year, the registration has been a killer for our printers, and they have been sweating about this. The registration, the, the, the fact that this watercolor shouldn't go into the head, this is the killer. The tighter the registration, this one was not so bad because the lines are fat. This one was easy. This one, they all, 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 we have the mouth. There's a red color in the mouth on all of these guys. And if that's misaligned, you're in trouble. There's blue inside the eyeballs. If it's misaligned, we're in trouble. Same thing here. Red in the mouth, red outside the eyes, blue is inside the eyes. The registration is what's killing our printers here. The red exactly on the line here. And at the scale we're talking about, it's very, very, very difficult for them to do that. You can see me carving. I'm carving here with a, a magnifying glass. They don't get to do that. You can't print with a magnifying glass in front of you. And all of them have told me, this is it, Dave. We can't keep getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And we have a bit of a crisis here because the September print, the one that they're printing upstairs right now, Chonsan went overboard he carved the lines microscopically tight. I mean, my, isn't that what David does? No, he carved them microscopically tight, and the printers are sweating blood and rejecting tons of copies to get it to work. And they've about had enough. I, 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 not if I said I've got a revolution on my hands upstairs there. That's not quite the case. But they are, the natives are restless. We are uh, not completely 100% happy campers right now because the work is too critical and too difficult. 
it will be okay if you're making a print that's that's a three time three hundred dollar print. That's fine. But when it's only a few you know a few cents, a few dollars, it's very difficult to justify that. Very difficult. So we've got our work a little bit out of whack this year. Imagine a print, for comparison then, imagine a print, something like the surfer girl that you've seen me start to work on. It's a larger print. It's got some super delicate areas. There's going to be a face, eyeballs, hair that will need that very, very tight level of registration and delicacy. And people will print very carefully to get it exactly right. But that print's going to be whatever, $135, $150, I don't even remember what it's going to be yet. You can spend your time and energy and effort doing that. When it's a small print like this that's going to be, uh, what is it, $55, I think, for the month here, and there's five of them, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. staying on camera and it's hard to tell where I am. I think I'm okay. Seems like lots of different conversations going on over there today. Absolutely lots of different conversations. Good. So, Dangaksha's carving, I didn't, am I, do I know about this? Is this news? Wait, 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 wait. Is this something news to us? Or, or am I supposed to know about this? Commotion, please. It's not a question of commotion. I know you, you, you've leaked something here. Let us know what's going on. What do I already know? I'm sorry, I don't remember that the, the names and who's who and stuff. It's, I still get confused with this. You know. A second try, no big news. Don't worry, Dave. I'm not worried about the. I'm worried about the competition. <laughs> I'm interested. It's not a question of being worried. Posted in the Baron Group on Facebook a while back. Okay. There's another one coming after me. I have a meeting tonight uh, with uh, people in Europe, a Zoom meeting. It's related to one of these projects that I'm sort of not supposed to talk about. There's two things going on at the background at the moment. One is a really, really tight NDA type thing that I'm seriously not allowed to even 
talk about, which it's actually my part in that one is now finished, but I'm not allowed to to mention what it is until the physical product is, is available. So that one's done. But there's another project going on with another group of people in, in Europe that is, I don't know, it's not NDA level of secrecy, but I think the idea was not to allow, not to talk about it too much in case it doesn't happen. Anyway, there's a meeting on, on a, a Zoom type or, or Teams meeting tonight with the European side of the project. And uh, if, if the discussion goes cleanly and smoothly, then it will be, I think, ready for a, perhaps a public announcement. I'm not sure. So uh, tonight, Japan time. Got to get ready for that meeting. Talking about software, I don't know. Shopify website, no, my God, no, 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 not in a hundred years, sorry, no. No, 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 no. And without wanting to be sarcastic about it, I know our website is, I know people think our website is a bit funky and they think it's a bit difficult to navigate sometimes and they think it doesn't work. But actually our website, the Mokohanka website, anyway, the woodblock.com website is a mess. It's a total, absolute disaster. But the mokohankan.com website is extremely functional for us. Extremely. I know it sounds like to be a bit sarcastic here. We're not trying to sell more prints. If we move to a bigger platform, we would maybe sell more prints. People keep telling us this. We're not in any way at the moment trying to sell more prints. Our problems are all on the production side. So the website is what it is, and it's supporting us at the level it needs to support us. And it also works. It's astonishingly functional. We have a, a website that is integrated to a degree that, whatever, it's it's like Amazon level integration. You know, when you order something from Amazon's website, the robots jump into action, the thing ends up inside a package and it's on its way. We actually have a similar level of integration happening here. In our, in our, at our own level, in, in our own way. So, uh, so we're not in any way interested in uh, in Shopify or something like that. I'm sure there's professional designers out there. I'm sure there are people that can technically do a different job. We don't want a different job. The job we have right now, or the website we have right now, is the website that we want. Again, mokohankan.com. Woodblock is a disaster. Nothing. Oh, the floppy thing. You saw that story. It was blown out of proportion a little bit. I know, I know, I know. Um, the... The bigger story that, that that floppy disk thing was was touching on was the, what can I say? A year or so ago, the government announced a new agency to do a digital transformation of the government. Like you and me, they've seen these news reports from places like, I don't know, you tell me, Finland or something, where, where people's lives are completely uh, organized and the government runs on, on databases and people can get their government services properly and efficiently, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The Japanese government, I guess, has seen these type of stories, and they know that the system here, although Japan is a very high-tech country, the government bureaucracy here is extremely not high-tech. It's very conservative. And yeah, there's still fact stuff, and we are still faced with this. And in fact, Okamura-san, who will be here in a few minutes, she, and this is not a joke, she asked me last week, Dave, can we get two fax machines, please? One for here and one for Omi. And I stood there in stunned silence before saying, no, 
no, no, no, no, a hundred times no. She actually did ask me this because she is getting requests and she wanted it because the, there's a, she's had recently packages lost and she has to help track them down. That's her job, no problem, no problem. The post office requires a faxed copy of the original, uh, what do you call it, the, the, the package label that went out to this customer in France six months ago and the package is now lost. And the post office called her and said, okay, we'll need a fax of the label, send it over. So she came up to me and said, in order to process this insurance claim, we have to go and buy a fax machine. And that's like she actually, there she is, she actually said this to me and I'm like, over my dead body. And she said, well, that's what they want. And I said, that's what they said. They want information, that's what they said. Let's get real on this, let's go back. Let's turn around to them, you can scan that thing, send them a PDF, let's do it this way. She goes around and around, comes back a couple hours later. Yes, it turned out that that was okay. So she's done that. She made a file, put it on her website in a private location, gave them a link, and they clicked it and accessed it. But they said, we want it by fax. So she said, yes. And that's why these sort of things never, ever, 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 ever get changed. She's here. Let's chat with her about it in a few minutes here. Then, yeah, if we do need to send a fax, the 7-Eleven down the street has a copy machine. You put the copy in, you press the button, select fax, type in the phone number, out it goes. We don't need to buy one of those things. I'm sure the poster was printed off. Absolutely, that's not my problem. <laughs> that's not my problem. <laughs> morning. Hi, Alison. Good morning, good morning. We were just talking about you. No, not, no, 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 not, not evil. I'm a, the thing about the, a, the news report people are seeing these days, maybe you've seen it, there's a news report flashing around the world how stupid the Japanese government is because the digital agency at the moment is trying to get rid of floppies. I guess somewhere, somewhere, there's still some computers that are using the floppy drives. Floppy drives? Floppy drives. Did you see it? Anyway, it's a news story last week. The foreign press will just jump instantly on one of these. Mm -hmm. And there was a story of some months ago about fax machines. You know, Kono-san and his boys, they were trying to get rid of fax <laughs> machines. That's when we were talking about this just right, the right. other day. You know? So they've, they've seen this news story. Oh my God, the Japanese government is still using floppies. You know? Oh, I guess so. Again, 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 again. I just I saw the story go by. Like I don't know. When I started using computer, like when I was so, seven, so, eight. So, 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 so. But as part of telling the story, we talked about when the. Nandi wa tashi desu ka? Well, no, because I said <laughs> Ayano-san found this last week. The post office called us and said, "Please fax this." And Ayano-san asked, actually asked me, "Let's buy a fax machine." You know. So, and at that point, my volcano blows up, and I said, "No, no, 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 no." I actually told them PDF file, yeah, yeah. and then, you know, here I have yeah. the PDF file, yeah. and then why doesn't it work? So what happened? Like, Mm, but you know, we can't tell that you know. This okay, well, where does this stand? What's happened now? The PDF, they took the PDF? No, I asked Ishigami san to take this uh, the scanned document mm -hmm. I sent to Ishigami mm -hmm. san and they accepted it for some So reason. Ishigami san printed it out, took yep. it to the post office. So yep. that's how it works. So <laughs> she printed out her PDF at, in Ome, our Ome office. They printed this damn thing, walked down to the post office and gave it to the post office. They took it? They took it. Okay. <laughs> I don't understand. I just okay. like so the thing here is I should have given up and we could have faxed it to them. It would have been much easier and simpler for us. As it turned out, we had to walk down the street to the post office. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. I don't know. They were, they were so adamant about, you know, you know, we do not access this like, PDF document. Yeah, here, no. you're talking, but nobody can see you. Move it a bit closer. So, 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 so. It's just so. this story, is So now we've. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, we know about faxing. We know that Lawson and 7 Eleven does the faxing. We know that. I know people are telling me this. Believe me, we, we're on this. We know how this works. I was resistant. I said, I'm not going to get involved with any fax machines. Just tell them no. Tell them PDF. So Dave is trying to be the good boy here and resist this instead of going along with it. Yeah, I was like, I prepared everything apart from the, you know, the, the document they needed, and then mm. I asked them nicely to them, like, may I, you know, may I send this request? Request because mm. the, the package seemed lost, and they were fine. They were fine. 
the very end with the receipt. I'm like, okay, here's the PDF file, I brought it. <laughs> whatever, 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 whatever. Yeah, I started getting angry, so like I, I needed to leave. No, I get it. So it's not lost the websites. Yes, I understand. There are fax services. I, I agree. I understand. We log on. We become a member. It's, I, don't, I said Lawson, the Lawson has one, it's called Netprint, it's run by Toshiba. Mm -hmm. We sign on, we do the PDF, we upload it, they fax it out. I get it, we know how this works, believe me. <laughs> Just I said, no, I'm not going to cooperate with that request, that's all. That's the reason we didn't do this. So. Yeah, uh, hopefully uh, it's just to send a document to, so, I mean, so, so. like, um, send a request to the yeah. person if it's not in trouble. <laughs> 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 So the truck full of hard drives, that's the thing, that's a different story, I get that, that is actually a different story. So uh, some people, the do, uh, data transfer, it's sometimes simpler to get a hard drive, put it in FedEx and send it across than oh. it is to actually, uh, depending, I mean these days USB and net are fast, but they're not as fast as a staggeringly rich uh, hard drive passed mm -hmm. across, so, so that is not it. Someone says, faxing, are you doing business with people from the 1980s? We're doing business with the Japanese post office and the Japanese government. Next question, please. <laughs> See you later. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you. That thing about the faxing from the convenience store, it's actually, it is a thing, it's one of the major services they offer and it's used all the time. I know I'm in the convenience store there two or three times a day and all the time, I will see this all the time. If I have to use a copy machine sometimes, I have to wait and someone has a document there and you can see them, they've got their document and they're typing in the number that we're supposed to fax it to. This is, it's a thing, I'm sorry, you know, I'm not proud of this that I live in a country that does this. There's also been stories in the newspaper recently about that thing that, that I mentioned, that there's a new agency in the government. It's, it's not a ministry level, it's an agency level, which is, uh, their job is to digitize the government. And that was a year ago, and there was a few stories about that at the anniversary, the one year anniversary of this. And it seems that you, know, you could predict exactly what's gonna happen. The digital agency has gone into all the other ministries and said, okay, show us what you're doing. And the other ministries have maybe or maybe not happily shown them what they're doing. Then the digital agency comes back and says, okay, here's how we're going to do it. And the particular agency says, over our dead body, we've got a certain way of doing things and we've got a system in place and we've got software. There's no way you're mucking with this. And the central digital agency is tasked with changing the entire rest of the government, which is all fiefdoms. And my God, the blood that must be on the floor in those different rooms, absolutely. It's mission impossible, absolutely mission impossible. So I have no idea. If you ask me to, to, uh, to buy shares in the company that was being set up to digitize the Japanese government, I would run 180 degrees in the opposite direction as fast as I possibly could. Yeah, someone's got it so American airlines are still running on COBOL and stuff like this. I get it. The legacy is what it is. We ourselves have almost got rid of all of our legacy systems here now. Up until a few months ago, we still had strong, uh, major legacy systems in place. Most of them, do I have any left? I'm not really sure. What have I got left? I've, I've been spending now the last year or so working on our new system. Is there any legacy data left? I don't know. There are legacy procedures left, and in fact, our young accounting boy, Yamada-san, he's gonna come in this morning, and he is gonna be a happy camper. Because over the weekend, when I was supposed to be carving Ayu-san's blocks, I did another module for our accounting system. The module that counts up the uh, roy block royalties that are due each month. We have wood blocks here from places like the Doi Hunger Company. We use some of their old wood blocks. Instead of them 
making the prints and we buying the prints from them, we borrow their blocks, make prints, sell the prints, and we pay the Doi Hunga people a royalty for using their blocks. So simple, no problem at all. At the end of each month, we have to know how much to, to pay them a royalty. So the data is there. We know what prints we've sold. So up to now, our young accountant has just simply gone through the sales sheets for the past month, which ones were items that came from DOI, and he's made up a little total. And I put a module in place last night that does this now completely automatically. It goes through last month's uh, sales, pulls out all the ones that are relevant to this block thing, creates the uh, accounts payable invoice to DOI for them, enters it into our books, makes a PDF version, sends them a link saying here's the report on what we sold for you last month, bank transfer will follow on the 15th. It then uses the bank transfer information that we have for them to make a CSV that we will upload to our bank for making the payment. So this now happens with one button for Yamada-san and he will find this this morning when he gets here. What's our time? 9.06, show and tell. We have, uh, it's a little bit of a, what do you call it? It's a, not a repeat show and tell today, but we're going to take a folder that we looked at before, and we're going to dig it a little bit deeper into it. Tick, 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 tick. Nice. This conversation has changed into a different place here, so. I know the question of the technical debt to show so I know I have been really pretty good the last few months at the paying debt very 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 good very proud if somebody came in here today and wanted to inspect and analyze our software system if, if a, a good experienced software engineer systems engineer said come on show me how you do show me what's going on here I could show him the system now with uh, with some pride a few months ago, I would have not wanted to show it because there was so much uh, technical debt in there and so much legacy stuff. An experienced person would look at this and say, well, what about, uh, you know, and I would have had to say, yeah, well, we're going to get to it one day. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. And at the moment, the list of we're going to get to it one day, the list of those things is actually getting pretty small. We are, we are looking pretty good at the moment. first patron monkeys. The monkeys have been going out and out and out. We're on our third batch of 100. They're going out of here 100 at a time. The patron monkeys are in process and are being printed and are running. So, so far, 300 have gone. There's another 300 left, a bit more than 300 left. The monkeys are moving. If you're an old, older Patreon subscriber, subscriber, a uh, uh, so Patreon person with us, and you think the monkey should have arrived, drop us an email, info at mokohankan.com. Drop us an email and we'll check. Because lots of people, when they move, they forget to update the, their Patreon address inside the system. So if you think your monkey should have arrived and you haven't got them, just ask. Just ask. Soka, something I was going to ask. Speaking about the computer systems, there was something I was going to ask the, uh, the cloud here, the brain group here. Soon I have to decide on a graphing, sorry about the technical discussion here for a minute. I'm going to ask some of the techs that are out there right now, 9, 10. 
uh, our system at the moment is what they call a lamp stack system. We're running most of the software is on the server on PHP. The browsers use JavaScript to do things back and forth with the server. So it's a PHP Apache system over that side and a JavaScript system at this side. And we're, all of our system runs within a browser. The custom Mac software that I wrote years ago is now all, uh, all uh, it's all gone. It's all, uh, what's the word, when you, when you get rid of old stuff? Uh, Deprecated. It's all deprecated. You got it. I got it. You got it. You but you spelled it wrong. <laughs> deprecated. R E C. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So everything's now working very, very well. But all of our data that we see is tabular. I need to decide on a good graphing, a graphing framework for JavaScript. And there's no way I need to write this by myself. I mean, we're already using jQuery in the background to run a lot of stuff for in our JavaScript. And I need to decide. And I Googled the other day a graphing framework for JavaScript, and there's thousands of them out there, and I have no idea which one to use. If anybody has any experience or can recommend something, I need just say, I need bar charts and a couple of pie charts. That's all I need. I don't need three-dimensional counter-rotating sparkle charts. I just need bar charts and, and pie charts, and I need a good, easy to understand, and not so expensive uh, uh, framework to use for this. If anybody's got any experience with this, drop me a, low, a line, please. Info at mokohankan.com. Let me know your experience. At the moment, for our graphing and charting uses, what we're doing is simply I'm, I'm exporting CSV files from our manager system, and I bring those into my own uh, spreadsheet. I'm using numbers because I'm a Mac guy here. Some of the girls use Excel. So we bring in the, the spreadsheet and then we make the graphs in our spreadsheets. But I would like to have the graphs online in our browser as part of our management system. And that means I've got to choose, uh, choose a framework to use. So if anybody has experience, please. Let me know some uh, some tips and hints on what you think is a good one to use, or or if you've had bad experience, let me know. Oh my God, don't ever touch this because it was a headache top to bottom. Save me some time and trouble here, please. And it's got to be something we can install ourselves. It's not the service that we will purchase because I cannot trust that. You start to purchase a service from somebody, a year later they're bought by Google, Google shuts it down. So I do not want to do that. I want a standalone system, a standalone framework, and the, the publicly maintained, the more publicly maintained, the better. So. How's our time? 9.13, 9.13. Yeah, drop suggestions here too. I will read this later, absolutely. Well, the monkey, I said, monkeys, monkeys. Oh, if you joined in April or May, no, if you joined only in May this year, then your monkey has not gone yet. Absolutely, absolutely. Your first summer monkey will leave in, if you joined in May, June, July, August would be the first time to come up, but we're halfway through our batch, so your monkey is not gonna come for another six weeks or so. Don't quote me, but anyway, no. If you joined in May, you, it won't be sent to you yet, absolutely. In an ideal system, it would have been, because you would get your first Patreon should be three months after signing up. But you're coming just at the time of year when we're dealing with our massive backlog for opening up the suburb summer chibi. There's our vegetable man.
Martin were here, Joe. Okay, let's move on to Chantel. To recap, before we sign off for this part of what we're doing here today, to recap, these are the blocks for our September subs subscription print. There's a key block, which is already carved and ready to go. There's now one color block, which is almost all carved. This corner's not done. These zones are done. These are colors. You can see how it matches to show. There's shapes here, and you can see the same shape on the color blocks. There are also four more color blocks coming on one piece of wood. One, two, three, four. Registration marks, they all have their own registration marks. So after a few more days work, if I had nothing else to do, this is a day and a day. This is maybe two days work if I had nothing else to do, but it's gonna take me a few days because I do have other things to do. Okay, show and tell, show and tell. As I said, this is going to be, we're gonna just, um, what's the word? Not deep dive, that's the wrong expression. We looked at this folder before, we opened it and looked at two or three of the things at the front of it, but there are dozens and dozens and dozens of similar prints in here. So the concept we have seen before, don't get upset, ah, oh, we've seen always. The concept you've seen before, but we are going to look at a couple more examples of this. And one reason why I'm doing this is because in the collection upstairs, we have small folders. We have A4 folders. This is A4 to show. Then we have B4. Then we have A3. We have A2. We have massive stuff. And we have rows and rows upstairs of large boxes full of large prints. And I have no way to get those here onto my table for an easy show and tell. So this is kind of a thing that I'm gonna to have to decide what to do with now, because we have gone round in our show and tell all the small stuff that I can easily bring down and put on this table. But we easily have as much again in large objects that don't fit on this table. Whatever, I'll huh? see if I can figure it out. The only real way to do it is to do it as a two-man job. Get a separate table, get Ayano-san to come down and run the camera, and then get a place where we can look at some larger prints. We'll try and work that out. Anyway, 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 anyway. So there's a big, thick, thick, thick folder full of these things here. We looked about half a year ago at some of these. You remember what they are. Just to recap what we were looking at, we saw uh, dinner menus from the old uh, Trans-Pacific or world-class steamships that used to go around the world. A number of those, the ones that were based in Japan, had very, very, very first-class service, and as part of their first-class service, woodblock prints did play a part in a number of places in their service. I think we looked at some of these and we were laughing at the menu. So this is, as I said, this is, we looked at this book quite a while ago. So what I'm going to do is simply now, I'm going to flip to the back of the book. We started at the front of this book and we looked at two or three of these. I'm just going to jump straight to the back to a different era of the same kind of stuff. So as I said, the concept is a repeat, but let's look at some nicely made very prints. I'm not gonna be able to actually perfectly date all of these. Some of them will. The ones that have a menu printed will actually have a date on them. Oh, as it turns out, look at this. This one is going to be an interesting one. Hands up, everybody who can recognize the designer. It's too bad, there's actually a blob. It's a mark of ink. Maybe I can actually, excuse me, surgery, just a sec. <laughs> after 80 years, after 80 years, this lady is 80 years old. This lady was printed in 1940. It wasn't bark in the paper, it was a piece of junk on top. Look at 
this is a beautiful little print. My God, it was just shoved in the back of the filer. I've never even really looked at this before. It's based on a design by Ito Shinsui. And the company that made these menus, I very, very, very much doubt they talked to him about this. I think this is simply just taken as a generic object. They would just use whatever pretty pictures they could find. And how do I know what date it is? Because in the back here, the menu has a date. Tourist cabin. The tourist cabin. You tell me what, this isn't even from first class. Let's look at this menu. 1940. In Europe, we know what's happening in 1940. Where is this? October 1940. We know what's happening in Europe already. <laughs> These guys are still running a Pacific service. This will be between America and Hong Kong and Japan. Japan, by this time, Japan's been at war for, you tell me, five, six years they've been at war with China. Manchuria. Look at this. And if somebody could Google this, what route are we talking about? Because I don't know the route here. In October 1940, these ships from the NYK line, where were they traveling? Obviously, they're off their European beat by now. There's no map on this one to tell us where they were going. It's the NYK line, Nippon Yusen Kaisha, the Japanese steamship company. And here we are. The print would have been made in April 1940. It's opaque pigments. I don't know if anybody's mentioned it. The white that we see here, the white of her skin is the white of the paper. The white on these other parts of the print are not white. They are gofun. This is nicely done. Very, very nicely done. And somebody, they would have found it, of course, it would have been on their table as they came down to dinner. I'm sure seating was decided, and Mr. Bull sits at this table, and the menu would have been there placed. We talked about this before. The woodblock printing was not done on board the ship. The woodblock prints were made then they were also printed with machine printing, but the menu part would have been printed on board the boat. The boats had their own small office printing press set up. They printed a newsletter each day and a little, you know, weather warnings or captain's talk and stuff like this. They had a small printing press on board, and I imagine the, the evening before, I don't the timetable, the chef would have reported his menu to the printing company and they would have prepared this for the table. I see now, this wasn't dinner, this is a, this is lunch, luncheon. Oh my God, this is luncheon. And I presume people choose from this. I don't think they ate everything that's on the list here. I think this is the menu that's available, I guess. October 1940. Seattle was the main port. They may have also gone from San Francisco. I don't know. They went across to Yokohama. They might have been... Uh, no, they weren't stopping in Hawaii, I don't think. I guess they were stopping in Hawaii. Hey, look at this one. Guesses? You tell me. What are we looking at? Key West? Something Florida?
There's no comment about what the image is, and I don't recognize it at all. I've got no idea. It's a modern graphic design. This is all woodblock printed. Very soft, soggy paper. Very soft. Oh, it's glued on. Oh, it's not glued on. Look, look. Okay, sorry about that, I didn't realize. You get it like this, it stands on your table, it's printed front and, black, front and back, the menu is inside, and it turns out, I thought it was pasted on, it's not. It's actually a single sheet of paper. Let me try and open that up again. It has, so the woodblock print, you can see, printing on the back, the woodblock work. So that's your single sheet of paper that the woodblock workshop would make. Then the NYK line part, yes, that's woodblock printed. The NYK line too, it has a barren rubbing on the back. So the woodblock workshop would do this part and the picture and then everything else. This is obviously, you can see the heavy op says, this part is done on the boat, ship, boat. Am I in trouble using the wrong word here? I don't know. They are a hugely, hugely interesting window onto an era. This one's going to be the same system. They are hugely, hugely interesting. They used to be dirt cheap. Mark Kahn and I, my friend in America, we used to pick these up on eBay in the early days, 1997, 1998, somewhere on there. We, he and I just, oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. There's double, okay, can you see this? This might be difficult. There is a menu here. It's printed in uh, goldish, it won't be gold, it's printed in bronze powder, I think, and it's oxidized so that we can barely see this. It probably the day they did it, it would have been super shiny and sparkly. Now here we are, we are now uh, 60, 70, 80 years later, it is no longer super shiny and sparkly. Is there a date on this one? Excuse me a minute, forensics, hang on a sec, let me get down here. 1930, Sunday, the 5th of October, 1930. Colombo Maguro Sashimi, wait, that's not boat name, oh, extra. The clock will be advanced 30 minutes at midnight. What's the ship name? Here it is, the MS Tedukuni Maru, Captain T. Sekine, Commander. Sorry, excuse me, 1930. Almost as old as Dave, somebody says. Yeah, very much, ha, 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 1930. So it's 92 years old. What I was, once we opened it up, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you this. We opened it up, and can you see, look at this, you can see the embossing of the lettering from the back. They printed it onto this thick, soft paper in a little metal type. There must have been a guy in the printing press room on board the ship getting little metal type and stacking it all up. You know how it's done, how metal type is kachuk, kachuk. The type not only embossed through the paper, but it embossed through, we have an embossed version of the menu On the other side, on the back side. <laughs> we can read it in shadow. And probably over on the print itself, it's probably reverse embossed. What's the picture? It looks on a generic Oriental, Southeast Asia, you tell me, I don't know. It could be Thailand, Laos, China, Cambodia, I don't know. It's not specifically Japanese, I believe. Perhaps it could be, I don't know. This to me looks like a design that might have been created on the western side. These are so much fun. So much fun. Classical Japanese ukiyo reproduction. This one is this form. 
Let's just look at this one more. This is classic ukiyo-e. Tough for the printers because they're printing on thick, 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 thick paper. This would not have been easy to print at all. Here's our route. San Francisco, Seattle, Vancouver, over to Yokohama, Honolulu, Yokohama, Kobe. Then over to Shanghai. What's the date? What's the date? What's the date? 1936, the Yasukuni Maru. John's talking about the picture here. The picture here, famous as it is, there's three objects that none of which exist anymore. We are looking through the old Kaminari Mon, which existed in Hiroshige's time. It burned down before he died. In Hiroshige's lifetime, this first gate was gone. We are then looking up at what used to be the Nio Mon. Sensoji Temple is hidden behind here. Nio Mon also burned down in 1945. The pagoda was on the east side of Neomon. It burned down in 1945. So all three objects that we see here were all long gone, destroyed. There is now a new Kaminarimon, which is half the height of the old one. The Neomon is gone. It's been replaced by Hozomon. And the pagoda is now over on the west side. We are looking up Nakamise. We are looking up from, from Kaminarimon up to Neomon. So all three of these objects are gone. Yeah, it's funny. It's a classical, interesting image, and it's completely no longer anything to do with reality. Let's take a look at this menu, and then we're going to sign off, because I have got to get busy with Aimi-san. Look at this dinner. Oh, my God! Okay, okay, okay. There we go. There's lots more. This folder, I have hundreds of these things, and there's another folder back in Omit. And friend Mark Khan has hundreds more. Anyway, there we go. Okay, let's pop up the outside. Sorry for the repetitive nature of this show and tell, but like, like I said, we have lots and lots and lots of different stuff to look at. Now I'm hungry, he says. Yeah, me too, actually. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I like that. We log saw this famous French stuff, and then in the middle of it says bologna. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right, okay. It's Monday morning. I will be back three days from now on Thursday, and uh, I'm not quite sure what I'll be doing. If all goes according to plan, actually, let's pop this down just for a second. If all goes according to plan, this color block set will be finished by then. And if that's the case, I will be carving the other block that's sitting behind me on the bench here. If not, whatever. One or the other, I will be carving one of the two. Okay, guys, thanks very much. I've had good fun this morning. For those of you who are curious about my back, my back is still very sore. It's delicate. I am walking very carefully, but I am doing the right thing. I'm going swimming and exercising well every day. So thanks for your best wishes on that. And we're going to look at this. We're going to sign off with, is that the day's first rickshaw? It's a training run. Look at this. A driver carrying a driver. Training run. That's how they do their training. The, the new drivers follow people first, and then at some point they have to do the real one. They put one of the older drivers in and say, let me take you around and do this. Trainee. Okay, I'm out of here. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye for now.